Hello everyone, Ralrina here, and this is going to be a long tutorial for how to access your headlamp assembly. It requires multiple steps, and we recently had some feedback to include all steps in one video instead of cross-linking. So here is start to finish access to these assemblies. Although a headlamp housing replacement seems simple, this lower screw on the bottom of the housing does require at least a partial or full bumper cover removal. This video is going to be broken up into the following three chapters, which you can skip to with each of these time segments. Tools needed for these three procedures include jack stands and the associated lifting components here, 7, 8, 10 millimeter sockets, a socket wrench with extensions, plastic pry tool, an optional socket U-joint, Phillips and small flathead driver, a T30 Torx driver, and an optional power drill. First, we're going to get the front of your escape up on jack stand. So here you have the three most common types of jacks that you'll encounter when trying to lift a vehicle. On the right, you have your standard scissor jack that comes with your spare tire. In the back you have a floor jack, and on the left you have jack stands. So as you can see, here is the arrow notating the jack point location that you'll find in your manual, and it points to that cavity right there. Now you'll notice the pinch weld coming all the way down this way. That's a pinch welded subframe. You'll also notice that there's a flat surface on this side of the pinch weld that you can't always see from the outside. If you were to just use a flat floor jack, you would come up and hit this pinch weld and bend it. As you can see that there are some bends that are already in here. If you're just going to be using your scissor jack, you slide it in place and crank it up, no big deal, because you're doing a pretty quick job. However, if you're going to have your car up in the air for an extended period of time, you're going to want to use jack stands. But then, how do these two different heads compete for that space? Well, you can see the shoulder on the top of the scissor jack six up and it will actually make contact with this top surface up here on the other side of the pinch weld. So now what we do is we use our scissor jack and we're going to scoot it back maybe about eight inches or so just so that we have enough room for our floor jack to scoot in from the side and plug into that cavity. So now that we have the car up we have enough room place our floor jack in place and now we lower it down Get right out of the way and pull it out and there's your jack stand in the correctly noted spot if you'd really like to use a floor jack try this trick with a hockey puck get a puck cut it down the middle and you'll have a spacer to put on top of the flat surface and behind your pinch well Alright, so the reasons the magnets help, because you can go anywhere along the inside of the pinch subframe and stick it on there to still leave room for your, your jack stand. And you position your floor jack and go. And then lower it as needed, of course. Now it's time to remove the bumper cover. Remember, any step in this procedure needs to be done on both sides of your escape. So just to save some time, we already have the car up on jack stands in the front and contacting the ground in the back. There's a chalk behind the back wheel, even though the car is in park. The front wheels are off the ground just enough for clearance so that you can still turn the wheels manually by hand side to side if you want. The splash shield is removed by just removing the three screws in the back, the four screws in the front, and one on each side. We're going to start by removing these, this trim panel that goes around the wheel well as well as this block here. There, there are two plastic nut rivets here, There's one, two, three here, one, two there, as well as one, two, three, four, seven millimeter fasteners. Once you take all of those out, you pull this out here. We can manually turn the wheel this way, seven millimeter socket. Then we want to remove one, two, three, four, five fasteners here, and then two on the underside. Now that we have all of these fasteners removed, we should be able to pull the whole piece out. 
One thing to note here when you're taking off your wheel well liners is that you have these white trim buttons probably you know, every foot or so along the radius of your wheel well. If you can at least push down and get that top tab to be depressed, it'll be a lot easier when you're trying to pry it out. You may need to order some spares though when you're putting them back on because sometimes they do break. Now we're going to go back and we're going to remove one, two, three more seven millimeter fasteners. Okay. So with the splash shield off, we're going to be removing our last remaining visible um, T30 screws. There are three of them. Next, we're going to be doing all remaining 7mm fasteners all along the bumper cover. There should be 14 altogether. So to note when looking under the corner of the bumper cover, there should be trim fasteners here, one on each side that you need to pull out as well. Mine was missing them. Next, we're going to remove the latch for your hood by taking off these two 8mm screws. Next, we have nine trim fasteners to remove. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, all nine removed. Here they are. We can now lift this tray up, including this, flip it back over there. Now we're going to take out the top fasteners here. We have one 7mm fastener on either side for a total of two, and then seven 10mm fasteners going all the way across the ends. Looking inside, right above the wheel well, you have three 10 millimeter bolts on each side right here, those three gray ones. Those are gonna need to come out. You can reach in through the top, but you might be twisting your arm and it might be hard to get to. One more thing you can do for better access is to come outside and remove any remaining fasteners that might stop this wheel well from coming down. And once you do that, you have straight access to reach up there and get those bolts out. Something that made this job a lot easier with getting those screws out was to get a quarter inch long straight extension with a quarter inch universal joint, a shorter extension, and then your 10 millimeter socket. If you reached under into the wheel well with the drill and reached over around your headlight and down to find the footing and connect the 10 millimeter socket to the head of the bolt, and just hold it down here and keep your fingers clear of this U-joint, you could actually make quick work of getting those screws out. If you don't have this stuff, a regular socket wrench will do, but in those tight quarters, you just don't have much room for strokes, so this drill was a big help. Whatever your method, these screws must be removed and just take some time. Eventually, you will get all six out. Looking right in front of the driver's front wheel, um, you have the engine control module here. You have the fog light housing assembly on the other side of this. There is a wire harness that needs to be disconnected before we pull the bumper off, and this connects all of the main bumper mounted electronics. I've already loosened it for the sake of the video so I can do this one handed, but disconnect that. Before we go to pull our bumper cover off, Make sure that you're clearing those little nubs on the top right here. Another thing to note where those three screws were just removed, before the bumper can drop, there are two tabs that you snap into place here that holds the bumper in position so that you can put the three screws back in later. Press those two tabs back and then drop the bumper down. 
you should start to see it separate as you push those tabs down. All right, now I'm just gonna kind of massage it all out of place. There is your bumper assembly. All right, now that we have our bumper cover removed, there's really a lot of things that you can do and get to. Um, you could replace your headlights, you could get to your horn, you can get to your washer fluid reservoir, you can get to your fog lights, your parking lights, and your turn signals. Um, there's a lot you can do once you pull off this bumper cover. All right, so we have the bumper cover fully reassembled and in place. Everything's pulled back together. I just wanna to give a few tips here that will hopefully save you all some time and aggravation when getting this back together. First one is looking where the bumper cover slides into the headlight. There are little tabs which will tuck into this gap right under the headlight and they kind of grip into snaps. So when you're trying to align the bumper when reinstalling it, make sure that those tabs are tucked in on both sides under both headlights. All right, second is this body panel gap between the front bumper cover and the front quarter panel where you have the three screws that are kind of difficult to get to. Make sure that this gap is fully closed. If you see it open, but you thought you remembered tightening your screw all the way, there's probably something wrong with your fastener and check that out before you button everything back up. With this trim molding here, get those white clips even if they've snapped a little bit, see if you can get them to sit back into those um, little notched areas on the back side. Walk your hand up and around the molding and press those white snaps in and they'll hold them in place long enough for you to start aligning these holes. If these holes for these plastic fasteners and these seven millimeter fasteners do not line up perfectly, you can kind of squeeze and push the liner and this trim molding around so that you can line it up with the actual material on the bumper cover. Finally, after having the bumper cover removed, we can get to our headlights. So using a quarter inch extension and a 10 millimeter socket, I'm gonna put it right on here. This plastic component is laying on top of the flange for the light. So we need to take this fastener off and lift this component off of the light flange. All right, that's off. So now that's just loose. We're now going to use a T30 Torx driver and back this screw out. And there's one of the three Torx screws. Looking in the back corner of the headlight, there's another T30 Torx screw right here that needs to come out. Okay. And then looking directly under the side marker and down, there's your third T30 Torx screw. It is this screw that you need to get out that makes you take the bumper cover off to change this headlight. You may not have to take the entire bumper cover off just to get with one headlight, maybe just pull the cover over, but this is the screw that's hidden by the bumper cover when wanting to lift away your headlamp assembly. Now we have to disconnect the lights. There's one right next to your high beam. This is the main power in for your high and low beam. Disconnect that connector, flip it back. And then you have your side marker connector, which is over there. Reach in and disconnect that guy. So press on that tab and pull off the connector. And you'll be ready to lift away your lamp housing. Note that the bulbs are still within the lamp housings. Twist and pull to remove them if changing to a different housing. Now I'm going to put one hand back here and one hand up here. Lift it away again. This piece right here is going to be loose. Just lift that up and your whole headlamp assembly now comes out. 
So then when putting your headlamp assembly back in, do the reverse order. It actually might be easier to take your side marker connector, connect that in first. You can see that right there. And then get everything in position. And again, when putting things back, make sure that this piece of the upper grill assembly goes on top of the flange of the headlamp. Also, when reinstalling the rear T30 Torx screw, loosen and tighten the screw to make sure that Final the profile of the headlamp matches this the body panel. This is up to you if you want to put this one in. I'm going to put it back in because it's supposed to be there, and I don't know if I'm going to be changing out my headlights anytime soon. But I know that from other people's feedback on the forums as well as Facebook, they leave this screw out so they can swap out the other Torx bolts and put aftermarket headlights in without having to take off the whole front bumper. Something to note if you should choose not to install the lower bolt is that you're taking on risk of skewing your beam pattern if the headlamp is not anchored in three points. So that is something you can do if you're thinking about upgrading the aftermarket headlights in the future. But again, I'm going to put this screw back in because it's supposed to be there. All right, well that sums it up for the headlight removal and replacement procedure for our 2013 and up Ford Escapes. This was done on a 1.6 liter SE using the bumper cover removal process. So if you thought this was helpful, please give this video a thumbs up, like, and a share. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Check out our Amazon store with other replacement headlights and options. And we have an app coming too, which is going to be awesome. Really looking forward to that. So get ready. We're going to have everything in one place that'll fit in your pocket. So thanks for watching How to Escape. We'll see you next time. Leave a comment below if you have one. Thanks.